An American journalist is sitting in a hectic newsroom trying to come up with a headline for his latest story. He's well aware that just a few days ago on October 3, 2022, residents of Hokkaido, Japan looked into the sky and heard an intermediate-range ballistic missile flying overhead. One of them later said, you can't ever get used to that sound. The journalist then writes, North Korea is an imminent threat, with the subheading, recent missile tests should worry everyone. What the hell is going on in that strange and secretive country? Indeed, North Korea has upped the ante of late when it comes to testing its nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles. A record has been set. Being as secretive as it is, we can't be sure how many nuclear weapons North Korea has, but it's thought to be around 30 to 40. According to experts, the bad news is that it has enough material to make another six of them every year. Before we tell you why you ought to be very concerned with what's happening, let us explain a few things. North Korea was thinking about building such weapons as far back as the 1950s, although it wasn't until the 60s that it started its nuclear program. It asked the Soviet Union for help, but received the reply, nah. It also asked China and again was snubbed. But the Soviet Union said, well, we can throw you a few of our top scientists and they'll help you build the facilities so you can have a nuclear energy program. This wasn't about weapons, just nuclear energy. Why not? It wasn't as if North Koreans were bathing in electricity back then, as they're not now. Then in the 1980s, North Korea took things a little bit further. It centered not just on making energy to light up its often potholed streets, but on building weapons of mass destruction. This wasn't great news for the USA, a country North Koreans were taught it was the epitome of evil. Folks would watch reels of outlandish propaganda on their TVs daily and be told in no uncertain terms that the US intended to ruin their outstandingly tremendous society. But on December 12, 1985, North Korea signed the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. Later, the International Atomic Energy Agency read a report handed to it by North Korea and proceeded to do some inspections. The agency said something didn't feel right, accusing North Korea of inconsistencies, and then saying it believed the country wasn't telling the truth about how much plutonium it had. In 1993, North Korea told the agency it wouldn't allow a special inspection. This didn't look good in the area of global politics. The country almost pulled out of the treaty, although reversed that decision at the 11th hour. Things didn't get much better in the years ahead, with the US often accusing North Korea of not being upfront about its nuclear ambitions. In 2002, Pakistan told the world that North Korea had already used its nuclear technology for years. By this time, the US had already imposed sanctions on North Korea, warning there'd be more to come if it didn't start doing as it was told. And it didn't. Then, in 2006, boom. North Korea detonated its first bomb, albeit underground. It became the eighth country in the world to do such a thing. Americans quivered when they read the headlines. Some people got into hate mode when they read that the most unstable and most dangerous country in the world was now capable of causing a right old mess. Even China condemned North Korea, as did the United Nations Security Council, after which a bunch more sanctions were laid down. These were mostly about various materials that could be used to make weapons of mass destruction, but the UN even put sanctions on luxury goods. This was mostly to antagonize North Korea's elites, who loved fine whiskey and other pretty goods made in the wretched, capitalistic West. Those same elites told the US and other leading powers that it needed nuclear weapons to ensure its survival. And anyway, they said, if you've got them, why shouldn't we have them? North Korea was already regarded as an odd country that refused to play ball on the world stage, but 2006 made it even more estranged from Western powers. Maybe some of you remember the time when just about every day there was another news article about the threat of North Korea. The trigger-happy president of the US, George Bush, said a new era had dawned. He said President Kim Jong-il, the so-called ever-victorious iron-willed commander, was enemy number one. Well, he was in the top three, at least. The eternal president wasn't as eternal as some people had imagined, though. He died in 2011 from a heart attack. The North Korean media said that when he went, a raging snowstorm just stopped and the sky glowed red. A thick ice of a lake ostensibly cracked open and shook the heavens and the earth. After all, this was a man with out-of-this-world powers. The first time he ever played golf, he got a 38 under par, a score that would have made Tiger Woods envious. The Korean people didn't hear about Kim Jong-il's fondness for rich food. They weren't told about his $800,000 a year cognac habit, or that chain smoking isn't great for a man's heart. The new supreme leader replaced him, Kim Jong-un. The question was, would relations with Western powers get any better under him? In 2007, North Korean leaders had met with representatives from South Korea, China, Russia, Japan, and the United States. They said North Korea would scrap its nuclear ambitions and close its nuclear facilities. And then, in 2009, boom, another bomb was detonated. But in 2012, under this new great leader, North Korea said there was no way it would conduct any more nuclear tests. The US said, okay, we've heard this one before. North Korea held out a metaphorical pinky finger and said, 
it would do what it said this time. And it said, come and inspect our sites, we welcome you with open arms. The US said, ok, if that's the case, we might even send you some food aid. Then less than a year later, boom! This was boom number 3. It was another test that happened underground. It was a big boom too. South Korea said it might have been around 6 to 7 kilotons of TNT, but Japan said it was more likely 8 to 10 kilotons. Germany said 40 kilotons, but on revision, said more like 14. The US said something along the lines of, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Relations were certainly not improving. They got worse in 2016 when another test happened. This time North Korea said it was not a uranium or plutonium device, but a much more devastating hydrogen bomb. Some experts questioned this, but no one questioned the fact North Korea was telling the truth when it said the test was an act of self-defense regarding the threat of the USA. News channels in North Korea told the people that the US was acting hostile and had time and time again been slanderous in criticizing human rights abuses that they swore hadn't happened. A North Korean newsreader said, It is just to have H-bomb as self-defense against the US having numerous and humongous nuclear weapons. The DPRK's fate must not be protected by any forces but the DPRK itself. We guess you're starting to see a pattern here. North Korea gets friendly, everyone shakes hands, North Korea does another test, then the US, EU, and most other countries condemn the test. This happened again later in 2016, after North Korea conducted its biggest test, thought to produce a yield of 20 kilotons. The North Korean government proudly announced that it had tested a nuclear warhead that had been standardized to be able to be mounted on a strategic ballistic rocket. South Korea wasn't happy at all, saying the North's act was pretty much self-destruction. And Japan, another neighbor, was less than pleased. The country said North Korea had just become a graver threat to Japan's safety. In fact, no one really was on North Korea's side. Both China and Russia said, come on North Korea, give it up, will ya? It didn't help matters that North Korea bragged that it could produce at will as many as it wants a variety of smaller, lighter, and diversified nuclear warheads of higher strike power and use them with ballistic rockets. As for Japan's relationship with North Korea back then, you could compare it to the relationship between a cat named Tom and a mouse named Jerry. The friction goes back a long way but got much worse when North Korea started testing nuclear weapons. In fact, a poll by the BBC revealed that the Japanese public had a more negative view of North Korea than any country in the world. After that last 2016 test, relations have never been as bad. Then in 2017, President Donald Trump condemned North Korea after discovering the country had conducted an intercontinental ballistic missile test. CNN wrote, The missile was launched from Mupyong-ni and traveled about a thousand kilometers before splashing down in the waters off the Japanese coast, according to the Pentagon. Trump said that US would support Japan and South Korea if anything bad should happen. South Korea noted that the missile was more advanced than others that had been tested in the past. US intelligence said there was little doubt that North Korea would soon have a reliable, nuclear-capable intercontinental ballistic missile. Nonetheless, no one knew exactly just what North Korea was capable of. Sure, they could guess, but even with the tests, it still wasn't certain what kind of world-wrecking potential the country had. In 2017, things became clearer. North Korea launched four ballistic missiles toward the Sea of Japan. Japan was enraged and it seemed North Korea didn't care. At one point, North Korea called Japan's leader an imbecile and political dwarf. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but nuclear warheads will really harm you is the expression that comes to mind. Later that year, North Korea announced that it had conducted a perfect hydrogen bomb test. This was 10 times more powerful than anything else it had tested and perhaps more than 250 kilotons. Soon after, Trump re-enlisted North Korea as a state sponsor of terrorism. Things then went a little quiet. The next two years didn't see headlines featuring North Korean nuclear tests. Still, US intelligence said it might be quiet out there, but North Korea was busy making a lot more weapons. It just wasn't testing them. Then in 2020, news clips showed North Korea wheeling out what the Western press said was possibly the world's largest liquid-fueled intercontinental ballistic missile. Ouch! This might not have been tested, but soon experts in the West were saying this thing could carry out a number of nuclear warheads and travel a long, long way looked bigger than anything North Korea had come up with in the past, with US analysts saying it likely had the potential to hit the US mainland. Kim Jong-un got on a podium and to his adoring fans stated, We will continue to strengthen war deterrence as a means of self-defense. Our war deterrence will never be abused or used preemptively, which will contribute to protecting the sovereignty and survival of the country and pursuing regional peace. However, if anyone hurts the national safety or threatens to use military force against us, I will preemptively mobilize all of our strongest offensive forces to punish them. Ouch again. But then there was a period of quiet again. Maybe North Korea had settled down a bit to deal with the pandemic, although as usual, the country wasn't exactly forthcoming when it comes to providing data. We do know it started a vaccine program, although when the leader talked about a million cases he said fever, not explaining what kind of fever. During the era of lockdowns and attendant mayhem, 
it doesn't seem North Korea was in the testing mood. Then came 2022, the year of records. It started by testing a bunch of weapons at what the media said was a frantic pace. This included the test of a hypersonic glide vehicle, what CNN called potentially one of the most powerful weapons on the planet. But North Korea wasn't done there. It also tested an intermediate-range ballistic missile and some cruise missiles. Then, to put some icing on an already explosive cake, North Korea declared in September it was officially a nuclear weapons state, and there was about as much chance of denuclearizing as the USA outright banning public ownership of high-powered firearms. After hearing about North Korea's volley of tests, you could hear a great big sigh from the less war-supporting segments of the US public, each admitting to themselves that peace in our time and less money spent on arms was pretty much out of the question now. The other part of the USA was screaming, USA, USA, with the addition of nuke those bleepers. Meanwhile, North Korean websites were printing news that might have made its own national say something similar. You could read such things as, Currently, the US nuclear aircraft carrier Ronald Reagan's strike group is conducting a joint naval maneuver exercise against us in the high seas of the East Sea of Korea with South Korean puppet naval ships. In North Korea, there's only one truth, and that's usually a pack of lies, or at least some truth dressed up in a fair amount of extreme bias. On one website alone just this month, there must be 20 stories of other countries congratulating the supreme leader on what great standout chap he is. You can look at a review on another website of a movie called The Day Before. The film's summary goes, The Japanese imperialists map out the plan of the Sakura operation to destroy a whole city before their defeat. A recent documentary film called Outcry of Mothers is summarized. It depicts the historical facts of the hot-blooded outcry of souls massacred cruelly by the US imperialists and class enemies. They cry out for revenge on the US imperialists at the cost of blood. You get the drift. This was why most people in North Korea might forego a meal or two, knowing that those expensive weapons will ensure their safety from the infinitely nasty Japanese and American imperialists. Another website explained that one of the most recent tests was to send a severe warning to the enemy. The story said the US had been conducting threatening military exercises in the Korean peninsula, which it said was an open threat and created heightened tension in the area. The story added, for this reason it was decided to organize and proceed with practical military exercises of various levels. The respected comrade Kim Jong was said to have been very pleased with the launches. He told the nation that they had the nuclear capabilities to defend the country. The tests said the story only happened because of the continuous, intentional, irresponsible, aggravating actions of the US and South Korean regimes that provoke a greater response from us. So there you have it, that's the North Korean tale of the tape. The website also said that if the US keeps messing about in the Korean Peninsula, we can expect more tests or even worse. Over in the US, President Joe Biden's administration already had its hands full with what's been going on in Ukraine. And as one person said, Biden is presently showing no fire and no fury in regard to North Korea. He is apparently open to talking it over with the Supreme Leader, perhaps over some diplomatic kimchi burgers. Some US hardliners think Biden should stick it to Pyongyang, but then some hardliners don't always look like they understand what nuclear war means whether in Europe or Asia. We aren't going to criticize anyone today, we're just here to understand what North Korea is up to. It seems the country isn't telling fibs when it says the US has been doing a few military exercises in the Korean Peninsula, so have Japan and South Korea, which obviously makes the North Koreans a bit nervous. The New York Times wrote, North Korea is frustrated, isolated, and uncertain about its future. God knows what Americans would think if North Korea started doing its own military exercises in the Atlantic. But another reason for the tests is the sanctions. When Trump was sitting in the big chair, North Korea tried to use its nuclear capabilities to leverage to try to get the US to lift sanctions, but it never worked out. Maybe North Korea is now thinking if it does a few more tests and big ones at that, the US might consider lifting those sanctions. Some analysts are now saying North Korea might actually step down from having longer range missile capabilities if the US lifts the sanctions and makes life easier over there. This is mere speculation. Also remember that North Korea has been a bit tricky in the past. What is certain though is the North Korean people will be behind their leader whatever happens. They might have been taught clockwork orange style that the US is evil and wants to destroy them. You might have heard something similar about North Korea, but let's face it, you had the choice to read different takes on that. They don't. With this in mind, you can bet your bottom dollar that North Koreans won't be asking their leaders anytime soon to back down from all that aggression. It also has to be said, there are certain factions in the US that seem to bristle with anger every time they hear about North Korea. You can't say North Koreans have nothing to fear. Try being in their heads when the next military exercise happens close to them. Then again, South Koreans are also understandably shaken. As for the Japanese people, when they hear about North Korea testing weapons that travel longer and longer distances, of course they get upset. The BBC recently talked to an analyst about a test who said this is the longest range missile it's ever fired over Japan. 
it could be a precursor to testing another nuclear warhead which has been predicted for some time. The Japanese know more than anyone about the destructiveness of nuclear weapons. People have family and relatives who lived in Japan when a 15 kiloton nuclear bomb hit Hiroshima and another bomb hit Nagasaki. Now these people are reading that North Korea has a similar weapon that could have a yield between 100 and 370 kilotons. It seems some negotiating needs to be done. It feels like a bit of good old-fashioned diplomacy needs to happen. But one problem with this is that the US is not quite on the same terms with Russia and China as it was when the three countries agreed in the past on the North Korean nuclear problem. And if we try and take a North Korean point of view, what do the people think when they hear that Japan and South Korea have drastically increased nuclear spending of late, with the US supplying city-wrecking arms to the latter? The New Statesman just wrote that South Korea's new leader always planned to take a harder line on North Korea. That might not sound great if you live north of the border. Is it really surprising that North Korea is conducting these tests? We think not. What's worrying is some people are talking about a dangerous cycle of escalation, and China and Russia closing ranks with Kim Jong-un. We the people need some grown-ups in that room that prevent this cycle from happening. To think that the big wigs of the world cannot agree to avoid mutually assured destruction sounds like madness on steroids. But then look at what happened at the start of the 20th century. Seems a lot of backing down from every side needs to happen, and fast. Otherwise, historians in the future might be talking about the utter stupidity of those reckless savages that almost brought down the human race as half the public was filming it on TikTok. Now you need to definitely watch What If North Korea Launched a Nuclear Bomb Minute by Minute? Or have a look at what is it really like living in North Korea?